was always center in the family. That, uh, well, as my aunt Dolly used to put it, hey, the boys uh, or the family had a, a drinking problem, particularly the boys, but it wasn't just restricted to them. Now, of, of the boys that she was referring to, her brothers, I would say three, uh, possibly four, had a drinking problem and one could handle it. But it was known in the family that this was something had to be watched, you know, in the family. Uh, you know, my father uh, was an alcoholic, I would say. When he took a drink, <clears throat> he usually he would go on what we call the bet. And he might, uh, he was a strong man, he might go five or six days without uh, hardly any sleep, drinking, going around visiting friends, people he knew, uh, perhaps he, that he wouldn't know. And then he'd uh, come off that, he'd let it end. My mother would get him back under control, say again, and uh, he mightn't have a drink for another six, for six months. So that's uh, how he was with drinking. Now he, he also used to have a personality change. He was a very charming uh, person, uh, personality. But when he, when he was into drinking, he was the exact opposite. You know, he was, uh, I don't know what the right description is, but uh, un very unpredictable. Uh, could it say be nasty, you know, a, a complete opposite of the personality of his normal personality. It certainly pained me. My, my father's uh, episodes, you know, I found painful. Eh? I didn't want to see a person that I admired a lot going around and making a fool of himself. I don't mean being foolish, but, um, you know, behaving in a, in a rude and ill-considered manner or making yourself a nuisance to other people, etc. Yeah, that, you know, so that was painful. Uh, and I certainly didn't like it, and it affected my relationship with my father, you know, so that's uh, painful. I, I wasn't uh, aware that, Jen, that my sister Joan had a real problem of that nature, you know. She used to drink beer quite a bit. And um, I was busy in my political life in a way a lot, so I, I wasn't as aware of it of the fact that she was um, an, uh, really an alcoholic, you know. You couldn't tell just by looking at her or observing her that uh, she was uh, uh, under the influence of alcohol. Now, she was a member of AA, you know. She joined AA. don't know how many years that she was in it, and she helped other people who, uh, who had the problem, which you're supposed to do in AA. I certainly regret uh, my sister's problems that she had, that I wasn't able to be of more assistance. I wasn't around enough or I wasn't sympathetic enough or whatever. So yes, that's a regret that I have. I don't know whether I could have been successful in really helping or not, but Andrew would say had a drinking problem. He drank too much at times. This would be, you know, every now and then, not, uh, not day in and day out. And, uh, you know, as his business problems got worse, I think he had increased his drinking there uh, during that period. So, uh, no, my only, uh, I, I would try to help where I could, and, uh, being and uh, talking to him. But when someone is really uh, drinking like that, it's not, you, you can't, not a hell of a lot you can do. Eh? You know, there's no point just going in and criticizing them. You know, you just try to help them along, hope they'll pull out of it. Andrew was a great admirer of my father's, you know. I was a great admirer of him as well. But uh, Andrew in particular, he's down working in the business with him, and he was in business. And I always felt that uh, a bit of Andrew's problem was that he was emulating uh, my father. You know, he wanted to be a businessman, uh, a businessman and a man uh, like his father. And this was, uh, you know, th and this was partly the cause of uh, his drinking too much uh, every now and then. Andrew could drink a lot of liquor, but he wasn't the same kind of drinker as, as my father. He, he wasn't, I never, at least I didn't think, he wasn't often a bender, you know, he wasn't often a, a bat or whatever, that, at least that's what I felt. Now, perhaps I didn't see him enough to know, maybe uh, friends of his, perhaps he was knocking on the door two or three in the morning, <laughs> come in for social hour, I don't know whether he did that or not. You know, I've been, always been a drinker. I enjoy a drink. I might have a couple of drinks a day. You know, if you get to the doctor and the doctor says, you know, uh, how many drinks a day do you have? 
you might say, oh, I have two or three a day. God, they think you're a raging alky, you know, when you say that. So, uh, well, I'm a, I mean, I enjoy a, a drink. I might like to have two drinks in the evening, but now at my age, I don't bother after that. And uh, uh, whereas uh, in days gone by, uh, I would drink before dinner, and I certainly drink a few drinks after dinner. But I was always lucky in that uh, physiology, I don't know, was the, the physiology or whatever, I don't know if that's the right word, but uh, once I had too much, I would get sick. Now that always, I always felt to be a great savior for me. I certainly am very thankful that, I'm, that I've uh, been able to control drinking, you know. Uh, I have not been subject to uh, the incontrollable, uncontrollable impulses that drinking can lead to, yes. I've been very thankful about that, you know. I think alcohol is a problem for uh, people of any income bracket or whatever, you know. It doesn't, uh, it's not a class, we don't have much of a class system these days anyway, but it's not a working class phenomenon or a mercantile class or the wealthy. It can happen to anyone. Um, it's throughout society. Some people can uh, handle li liquor. Some people, there are some people who simply cannot handle it. They can't have as much as one drink.